beautiful fish. Oh, they smoked it. Deep Wharton. There you go, buddy. Front hook. Man. Oh, doinked it. That is what is so awesome about cranking. I love it. Got that front hook. That's a good thing. You know, low light, a lot of times I transition between your, your lighter translucent colors. You know, when it's clear and sunny, the darker it gets, more of those darker colors, those reds. Even if you have super clear water, you can catch fish doing that. So, really solid fish. But I'll tell you what, y'all, I love bass. I love bass fishing. I love it. It just never gets old for me. I just, I'm gonna be honest with y'all. This sucker right here got it good. Pretty fish. Really pretty fish. That deep wart, getting it down there a little bit deeper, I think is just something about it. This is like a typical wiggle wart bank right here. And, and over my career, I've, I've, I've cashed a lot of checks on a wiggle wart, you know? And that original wiggle wart ran, I'm gonna say it runs about seven to nine feet, depending on the line size you're using. But there's days that I could tell, like, for whatever reason, maybe it got flat calm or whatever, this fish just slid off the bluff bank or that rocky bank, or, and I could not get my crankbait down there. And it wasn't like I went to a different profile and it just wouldn't get as many bites as this bait right here, that action. Now, we have the new Wiggle Wart Deep. This bait right here gets about 11 to possibly even 13 feet deep, which allows me to really get down there to those fish that I feel like have not seen that, that profile, that action. It's a huge deal, especially in the pre-spawn when, I mean, that is the zone they live in. You know, when you're throwing this bait, you want to be hitting the bottom. Like right here's a perfect scenario for what I'm talking about. You know, if I'm, I'm fishing this, this point, it's a little bit of a bluffy, shaly rock point. And if those fish are in that zone, that six to eight, yeah, I'm good. The wind's blowing, you know, conditions are right. And they're up there on that point. That's great. But now I can make this cast out a little bit deeper off of the point. And most of the time, the fish are actually sitting out. The conditions have to be perfect sometimes to get them up there in that six to eight in a clear water, highland impoundment, like we're fishing today. And being able to get that down there in that zone right there that's that's the strike zone you know that is the zone being able to get down there i mean that is a huge deal this bait is so aggressive action wise as it's rooting around those rocks you do not have to crank the speed up too fast to get, trigger those fish into biting and i think a lot of times you end up overdoing it because you know as that bait's going down there rooting around knocking around rocks you sort of want to pull it sometimes you want to crank it pull really feel around because as you think about a crawdad a lot of times when i'm using this i'm really trying to emulate a crawfish or a crayfish and as he's not running around going crazy out there and just you know a lot of times moving super fast i'm really just allowing that bait to to look at that natural state of just sort of moving around those rocks rooting around those rocks and triggering those fish into biting you know you want to make that cast and you want to get that bait to the bottom but then ultimately let that bait walk through that cover for you don't overdo it as i'm sort of pulling it through there you know, if I hit a rock, I might stop it every once in a while. Varying that retrieve really can be a difference maker. You know, when you have conditions where you're looking at like, man, I might need to throw a shaky head, flat, calm, sunny conditions, a crankbait can be a major player. I mean, this is a straight up reaction strike deal. Is this bait's going down through there, hunting around those rocks and going back and forth, and it comes up over a rock, they bite it. It just they don't have a long time to actually visually see this bait. It comes over, they can hear that tick, 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 tick coming from a long ways away. And so they, that anticipation, and then all of a sudden it comes up over that rock and they gotta decide if they're gonna get it or they better get out of the way. You know, as a fisherman, we we get caught up on our colors. And there's a lot of different colors that come in the storm wiggle wart. Lots and lots of crayfish colors. And the thing that I always try to do is when I go to a fishery, I think of forage, okay? Forage, whether it's shad, gizzard shad, threadfin shad, in this case, a lot of crayfish oriented colors and try to match what those crayfish look like to ultimately the color that I'm going to select. So if I roll over a couple of rocks right here and they're more brown or more of like a translucent brown, I'm probably gonna go with a phantom brown. If they have more little green tint, phantom green. You know, if the water's a little bit more stained, Ultimately, I might go with a little bit more of a brighter color. 
But that little, that little bit of detail allows me to have a little bit more confidence when I pick this bait up and make that cast to know I have the right color.